These are nothing more than dollar store glow in the dark Halloween spiders. And of course, they're all just factory produced. And I opened up the bag and I wanted to show you these. These have suction cups to the back of them, so they're kind of cool. But we want to alter our spider because basically we want different kinds of spiders for our display so by looking at the spider I realized that the abdomen is kind of small on this one so let's get some feel of clay today some air dry clay and let's build up a better abdomen and change the shape of our spiders another thing is that you can run these under a hair dryer because they are soft plastic and you can mold and shape them in any shape if you wanted to you can actually put pins in the legs and hold them in place. You could also spray them with a lacquer finish to harden them up. So let's build up the abdomen on our first spider. First thing I want to do before I create the spider is I want to take off this suction cup because I have no use for it in our display. So we're going to get rid of that. The next thing is I'm using an air dried clay today. You can. This is Amos brand. You can get any of these uh, air dried clays online. You can go on eBay. Uh, they have buckets of them. They're on Amazon. Most arts and craft stores have them. And we are going to create today a large abdomen for our spider. We want more of a black widow spider shaped abdomen. I think this looks more like a tick actually. It's kind of spooky. But let's create this. Now what you want to do is once you have a new abdomen formed on your spider, you can see we've just altered the spider. We've made it into something new. Once you have this, let this dry for 24 hours and we can start the painting. And with our spider, 24 hours later, it is dried. Okay, so I'm using a nice large soft brush today and uh, using a black 999 acrylic now if you really wanted to speed up this process and you had a lot of spiders to do i would highly recommend just getting some black spray paint and spray painting them down you can do a mass production but in this case we want to just work on one spider today and i want to paint them black completely so what i will do today is once i completely paint our specimen black. I'll show you what it looks like. Isn't that frisk freaky to look at? Look at this. I have to use my uh, tweezers to touch it. So <laughs> not just a joke. I did some research on the black widow uh, spider species and basically the underside of the spider has the broken hourglass shape to it. Now that is possible to put on on this over here but maybe no one's going to see this in our display but you also need to know that some of the species have circles on their backs which are connected and they also have like a white halo around it and other species have more of a kind of a like a heart shaped um heart shaped kind of a spot on their back, kind of Jackson Pollock dots and dashes type of things. But I'm thinking about doing the the dots here. We're going to be putting the dots down and we need to use the appropriate color of acrylic paint. So for our color palette today, I highly recommend using a very visible Vermilion 7 acrylic today because if you ever looked at one of these Black Widow spiders, that red spot really really glows and we're going to be using a very fine brush so today's brush choice I'm using today I'm using a number four over here for acrylics paint and we are going to create the spots on our spider I mean, this is going to take some time, but it's going to be worth it. And notice that I had painted the underside of my spider as well. No prop maker leaves any stone unturned. It's very important to be able to make sure your props look as real as possible. We, we practice trompe de l'oeil in a way to fool the eye. And it's not just a technique, but it's also in creating things that people go, wow, is that real? 
So once I get all of my spider spots on here, I'm going to outline them in a white. So let me finish this and I'm going to show you what it's going to look like. Okay, so now that you got your red on there, I want to show you this very special tool right here. This is used for clay making, and there's a tiny little ball on the end of this. If you wanted to dip this into paint to put the spider's eyes on with just dots, you can do this very well. And uh, I would highly recommend using a like a silver gray to highlight them if you wanted to. I had to look up what a black widow spider's eyes look like and basically they're in the exact same order. Right here they're on the ridge and there's just a few behind it. But today I'm going to be using a triple O brush that I have in my collection and we're going to be putting on our white, uh, the halo around the spider's red marks on the back. Today I'm using a white acrylic white shield number 600. Very, very easily we're going to put a halo around the spiders. back end. I know someone out there is going to ask how did you create that effect around there. Basically it is just a tapping effect. I didn't brush it around. I tapped the paint on the edge of the color so it gives it more of a natural shredded look. So that's what you would find in nature and not perfectly symmetrical. So that is a good look on our spider to create the eyes I'm going to be using our very fine tool over here and I'm going to be dipping it in to our silver this is a 995 what brand is this this is an acrylic alpha silver we're going to be loading up our tool with enough paint so we can just touch the edges That really stands out. There it is. Okay, so the next part we have our water and we have our silver and our white over here. We're going to do the legs on our spider. This is very important detailing here. We're going to be mixing about one part white and one part silver. Just enough to create that shadowy illusion, illusion that we need to use on the tips of the legs here. I highly recommend doing each and every bump. It's small details like this that make things stand out. Everywhere there's a joint, I would just use it to highlight the refractory of the joint. You can be very careful getting in there. Now taking your water and washing that down a bit. Blending that into the plastic. Now if you wanted to set this up a little bit faster you can use a hair dryer. or you can let this just air dry. Let's do the body as well. Let's highlight the area of the legs that meets the body. And brush that in. Okay. Our last part of it, I had just put the spider under our hair dryer here. Today I'm going to be going back into our very special burnt umber number 925. What are you going to do now? We are going to create an aging wash. We want to create a slurry. 
with the 925. We want to dull down the whites on the spider. I'd highly recommend just doing the whole spider with the 925. Layer it on and let it air dry. Very, very lightly. Make sure that it's one part water and one part paint. Okay, let this dry. Let's see what this looks like. And now the moment of truth. We turned this chintzy dollar store spider into this spider. What do you think? Prop maker special. Um, just, it came out really intense. And the other thing I like about this is that you could use this in any type of display. If you have the right cobwebs, if you wanted to put this on a corpse, if you had to write a thematic photo shoot, this would be really intense. Now to add a very special element to our spider, we're bringing in clear coat of fingernail polish. Watch what this does. Boom. This will give it that really great finish to bring that, bring that spider to life. Once we get our spider all finished, now what would we do? I'm going to give you the perfect solution. Go out and find a box of any size that will fit that spider very, very nicely. To create a specimen box, we're going to put that spider right in there. And we're going to be using some colors today. I'm using a black 999 uh, acrylic over here, a 901 titanium white, a 955 olive green for the interior. Now, I'm probably saying, why don't you just use all black? Because the color of the spider is black, and we would like to have that spider pop. I would also like to have you go out and get some of this foam tubing that you can get in any dollar store or Michael Craft stores or any art supply stores that you have, a soft brush, a permanent magic marker to mark the OHP plastic, which will become the glass sheet that will go on this box, and a pair of scissors to cut that out, plus a nice hot glue to glue Mr. Spider in the box. We have some projects here today, so let's look at our first project we need to do. I would take the box over here, and I would create... A window that you were going to hot glue on there and yeah you can go right to the corner and do like this and just mark off the size of the pane of glass pane of glass pane of glass mind you that that is going to go on the top of this box you can cut that out a little bit later we'll put that to the side and the next part of our process is making sure Mr. Spider fits beautifully in there. Oh, he's really great. Okay, and we're going to do two things. We're going to paint with a 999, the in, uh, exterior of the box, and we are going to use the olive green for the interior. Now, if the olive green that you are using is too dark, what you need to do is mix a little bit of white number 901 to it to make this more brighter so the spider really stands out. So let's paint the box right now. Check out our box. I painted the outside a nice black. And then I'm going to let you in on a little secret here. See that nice dark green in there? Well, the original green that I had used right here, this olive green, was actually a little bit too bright for our spider. So that's why you have the options of using 
more black or more white, depending on how your bug looks. It's not bug, it's an arachnid. But how this goes in here, like this, is going to make a big, big difference during the way it's displayed. So making sure, now you can actually see that I'm using the opposite colors over here because our most powerful color on our spider is red. So we also have a triad going on here of red, black, and white. So that's a one all basic unit right there of color. Now we're using over here a complementary color such as this nice dark olive green mixed with a little bit of black. I had to tone it down a little bit. So this is where we're going in our display. And we're going to put the label down here and we're going to put on our glass and then we're going to put our framing around it. So let's do that now. We are now moving into the home stretch. Right now we've got our spider hot glued down inside of our box and I would probably suggest creating a label that is going to, I'm going to pick this up right now very carefully with one of my tweezers in, that label is going to go down inside of that box. But before we want to put that label in there, I would highly recommend aging it with a gold okra uh, 609 here that we have just a little dab in some water and then using just a soft glue or a white glue or even this is a liquid glue and putting that down and then as you notice I have my shield my glass cut out I'll be hot gluing that on there and then in the final piece we're going to be putting our uh, framing around there so let's do all that now what I did was I put a little bit of the gold ochre out here and I'm going to create a slurry like I always do. I'm going to make this down to about, I'd say, four to one. And I want to stain our label. Now, if you're wondering how I made the label, there are all kinds of free typefaces online and you can just use them. I used one that had the old-fashioned typewriter style so it make it look more like it was a scientific uh, specimen and I'm just going to put just enough of this stain around the edges. And you saw I did the inside but I'm using it a little bit more the stain around the edges and that is perfect now just to hold that in place I'm going to take another piece of paper and I'm going to put over this and remove the excess and blot that down very good okay we're gonna let that dry and then we're gonna put that inside of our box and we are almost in the home stretch here yeah, I got my plastic tacked on there through four little dots of hot glue and now I'm putting the framing on all sides of our spider case here and we're just going to paint those up with a acrylic black 999 let these dry cut them in place and we're in the home stretch how comes the coolest part is just showing off what this exactly looks like in the box and it came out really cool. <laughs> uh, imagine having a whole entire like collection of different types of specimens that you make. I mean these are something I really get into and I've enjoyed making them and I'm just taking a dollar store spider and completely transforming it into a completely new prop. Gothfully yours, Professor M.